Hey guys, salut, it's Alex. So today it's part three, the final part of 12 creative recipes using only a can of chickpeas. If you missed part one or part two, please hit the link now to catch up. The main goal here is to inspire you and to give you confidence to cook even with super basic stuff. That being said, let's begin. Chickpea water, chocolate mousse. In a thoroughly clean bowl, squeeze a fresh lemon. Nothing like the genuine freshness of a fruit. Add chickpea water from a can. Whisk it on low speed first, but as soon as it gets foamy, increase the speed to its maximum. Gradually add three tablespoons of sugar to firm it up. After six to eight minutes, you should get firm peaks. In a bowl, add 100 grams of dark chocolate, roughly chopped. Let it melt in the microwave 30 seconds at a time. First, add a pinch of salt and a tablespoon of cocoa powder. And then gradually incorporate four spoonfuls of chickpea mousse in the melted chocolate. It will loosen it up. Then, dump the rest of the mousse into it. At this stage, if you mix it, you will ruin the fluffiness. So instead, fold it gently. Get it in the fridge overnight. It's sweet and light, but it's very intense. First because of chocolate and cocoa powder, but also because it's full of air and so really effective to carry the flavors up to your nose. Crushed almonds and finely chopped mint leaves can't do anything wrong. Chickpea Soka. A thin unleavened baked chickpea pancake. Super traditional in France, also very famous in Italy, for example, where it's known as farinata. It's classically made with chickpea flour, but with a bit of imagination and a lower expectation, let's be honest, uh, you can make it with canned chickpeas. In a blender, add one can of chickpeas without the juices, three tablespoons of cornstarch, three pinches of salt, a drizzle of olive oil, and gradually add water until you get a thick pancake batter. Add a few drizzles of olive oil to an oven tray and place it in the oven on a high position about 15 centimeters away from the top. Let it heat for five minutes or until it gets real hot. Carefully get it out and spread the batter into a thin layer. Back in the oven it goes for 10 minutes, 15 centimeters away from the grill to cook it through and five minutes 5 cm away from the grill in order to get beautiful charred marks on top. <laughs> to be honest, it's a bit different from traditional soca, but it still is very good and it stands somewhere between oven fries and cornbread. There is a quick info on my Patreon page, you will find all those recipes in a PDF, printer-friendly, ready-to-download format, but also for the biggest supporters, you will find those stickers, which I call Tasty Cheat Sheet. No, no, wait a minute. Tasty Cheat Sheet. This one is about how to make flaky pie dough. I mean, it's a cheat on it. Halabisa. Now this is definitely out of my comfort zone. Halabisa, as known as hummus sham, is a popular Egyptian street food, which in fact is a bit more complex uh, than my, you know, uh, overly simplified and shamefully uh, easy to make recipes. However, I just did that to get you started. In a saucepan over medium heat, add a can of chickpeas without the juices. Add two cloves of garlic, gently crushed. Two quarters of a red onion, three bay leaves, three sprigs of thyme, a big squirt of tomato paste, half a teaspoon cumin powder or 
a teaspoon cumin seeds finely ground, half a tomato nicely diced, now cover with two cups of water and bring that to a boil. Then reduce heat to a bare simmer and let it cook for about 30 minutes. Before serving, season with salt, pepper, chili and a squeeze of lemon. It's traditionally served hot in a glass, but as it's already a cheat on the authentic recipe, I bet it would be nothing but splendid, almost frozen on a hot day. If you think you have one recipe that is painfully missing in my selection, then please, uh, by all means, share it in the comments down below so that everyone can enjoy it. Chickpea falafels. It's clearly my uh, favorite recipe so far. Those real falafels stop immediately. Authentic falafels cannot be made with canned chickpeas. Never. Period. Ever. Period. Okay, no problem. Open a can of chickpeas and drop the canned chickpeas without the juices in a food processor. Add half an onion roughly chopped, two cloves of garlic, two tablespoons of flour, two big pinches of salt, one teaspoon baking powder. Now let's bring in the spices. You can use powdered versions anytime, but if you have a pestle and mortar, then please by all means use it. If you are really into spices, then I can only advise you to go and watch my series about spices called Mundus Aromaticus. One teaspoon black peppercorns, one teaspoon cumin seeds, one teaspoon coriander seeds. Bash it and add it to the mix. out of the food processor, add a handful of roughly chopped herbs like parsley, mint or coriander or like I did, just use a mix of all three. Deep or shallow fry them at 180 degrees Celsius or 360 degrees Fahrenheit in small batches for about 4 to 5 minutes or until they get golden brown. Pat them dry thoroughly on kitchen paper and let them cool down. I'm making a quick salsa just to cut through the fattiness of this dish. Quickly dice tomatoes, zucchini, pickled cucumbers and red onions. On the side mix mayo with pickling juice and sriracha sauce. Crispy, fluffy, rich but you know well balanced because of that punchy salsa. I'm not kidding. This is one of the best falafels I've had in a million years. <laughs> it can't possibly be wrong, my dear Alex. Anyways, they are very good. Uh, guys, I'm a bit sad because basically it's the end of that uh, mini-series about canned chickpeas. Uh, truth be told, it's been an absolute joy for me to share uh, those recipes with you and to show you that, once again, good cooking doesn't necessarily involve expensive and fancy ingredients. Also for me it's been quite uh, challenging and interesting bringing some unusual dishes in the game. If you like the whole series, then please give it a thumbs up, like it, and share that over all your social accounts. As always, don't forget to tag me in and use the hashtag spread it like butter. Last people, click subscribe because I make new videos every week. And if it's always, always about food, of course, it's also about inspiration and creativity. Peace, bye-bye, salut.